Bob's Burgers is one of the most beloved animated sitcoms of our generation. You can say that again. It continues to provide heartwarming episodes filled with the relatable struggles of a working class American family, and it's one of the newest animated shows to receive the feature length film treatment, finally earning a spot on the big screen. Now, while the movie technically flopped, primarily due to poor timing coming off the COVID-19 pandemic, I think it's only a matter of time before more and more people discover this gem of a musical comedy slash mystery slash adventure. It perfectly embraces everything we know and love about the show, and it delivers a grand approach to a rather simple story, one that has simple themes and lessons on the surface. But as Bob's Burgers is known to do, there is always a golden nugget or two to find the further you dig. So before summer comes to an end, I wanted to take a look together at this soon-to-be cult classic and see for ourselves what it truly has to offer. On the surface, the Bob's Burgers movie is a fun summer adventure that dives into the theme of self-doubt. Nearly every main character has an arc to go through in this film that revolves around having doubts in their abilities to achieve the thing they want most. I want to play, play this napkin-y thing, I made it, and it's gonna revolutionize American pop music. Gene has seemingly come up with a genius new invention, or should I say instrument, that he firmly believes in. However, as the film progresses, we see him start to struggle with his instrument's reception and start to doubt whether it was a good idea to begin with. Stop. What? Stop playing. Why? We can hear you from our planet and it makes our teeth hurt. You have teeth? How about you go get some different instruments and maybe figure out if music is... I don't know, your thing. But everyone loves us. No, they were being nice. See, they left. I'm not saying we'll destroy your planet, but it's not like off the table if you play one more note on that thing. Um. Bye. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tina has her eyes on Jimmy Jr., mainly his butt, as she has her heart set on asking him to be her summer boyfriend, a rising trend within her community that consists of someone gifting an important piece of themselves to someone they like as a mark of their relationship. And throughout the film, we see Tina start to struggle more and more with this quest, being forced to contemplate if the real Jimmy Jr. will ever live up to her fantasy of him. Fantasy Jimmy Jr., what are you doing here? You're thinking about me. You're thinking about this. Boom, 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 boom. You're not nervous that I'll say no. You're nervous that I'll say yes. And that real me is just never going to be as good as fantasy me. Dang it, Jimmy Jr., not now. Yeah. Oh, sorry. But of course, the main crux of this film relies upon the arcs of Luis and Bob Belcher, who both go through similar challenges as well. Luis leads the kid portion of this film, as she tends to do throughout the show, trying to solve the murder of Cotton Candy Dan to clear Fish Odor's name and save her family restaurant, but also to prove that she's not a baby in the process. I don't know why she still wears that thing. It's like she's five. Oh boy. <gasps> baby. <gasps> <gasps> What'd you say? Did she just use the B word? Uh, I'm pretty sure she said lady. I heard rabies. Luis has always had an overly strong connection to, and perhaps reliance on, her bunny ears hat, which has now morphed into this manifestation of her biggest fear, her cowardice. She fears she's not truly brave, and thus it explains a lot about the show and her character, and why she's always dead set on proving herself, especially to the older kids in her community, such as Tina and her friends and the devilish Logan. Her hat has been an object of interest for longtime fans, and so the movie diving further into this topic I thought was a well-deserved plot point and one I'm glad we got to see. Even if it was somewhat brief, and even if they decided to keep Louise's brilliant brunette locks a secret. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Louise, reminding you that you have detention today because you skipped school. Oh my god, your ears fell off! Okay, it's okay. What do we do? What do we do? It's fine. Meanwhile, Bob is leading the charge on the adult front, giving us an insider view on the financial, parental, and emotional aspects of the Belcher family. Bob has always been a worry ward, someone who happily takes the burden onto his shoulders so that his family can lead a happy life, which does explain his frantic outbursts from time to time. All right, listen, you're my children, and I love you, but you're all terrible at what you do here. And I feel like I should tell you, 
I'd fire all of you if I could. Bob. All right, hands in. You're all horrible! And the movie quickly reminds us of this fact, or informs us for the first time if we're new viewers to this IP, with the Sunny Side Up Summer musical number where Bob informs us of some unfortunate health symptoms. Here's another day I give myself a little diarrhea from the worry and the stressing and the hoping. Of course, he's not alone, and his wife Linda has her work set out for her, with her arc revolving around lifting up Bob's spirits and changing his perspective on things, trying to make him more optimistic like herself and their best friend, or at least best customer, Teddy. On the surface, the Bob's Burgers movie is a summer of doubt, a continual questioning of, am I worth it? Do I deserve this? Who am I really? And while there's a simple story to walk away from here, filled with catchy musical numbers, a whimsical mystery, and that classic Bob's Burgers sense of humor and heart, it still has something to offer that goes a little bit deeper into the psychologies of Bob and Luis, deeper into the overall family dynamic. For you see, Luis and Bob are not all that different. The show has actually made it a point to display the similarities of these two characters time and time again, from spaghetti westerns to Hawk and Chick. And in this movie, their arcs are actually more similar than you'd think, because they both revolve around and dig further into their deepest fears. Luis Belcher is a complicated kid, tough as nails, and equipped with more wit than is probably good for her. But deep down, she's also scared, and this movie does something really good, really healthy for her character by having her realize that she's scared on screen. Why is she dropping these bee bombs on me? Like, it's nothing. It's offensive to, you know, babies. I mean, you are talking to your toys right now. Is this about time to bring that up? She is scared, but what she doesn't realize is that everyone else is too. Everyone is scared of something, but the greatest heroes in our stories, the names written in our history books, they're remembered because they're the ones who faced their greatest fears and triumphed. And in the Bob's Burgers movie, Luis is quickly pinned against her greatest fear, girls her own age. Nah, I'm just kidding. Well, sort of. She is quickly put on the spotlight with Chloe pointing out her obsession with and over-reliance on her hat, something she never takes off because it's her security blanket in a way. For her, it's a remembrance of her darkest day. It's a vault where she locks away her true biggest fear, the fact that she isn't brave despite the persona she tries so desperately hard to put out into the world. Each and every day, I just think I'm pretty great. Yup, that's right. No big deal. I'm not hiding what I feel. She is constantly trying to be that calm, cool, collected kid in her school, but deep down, she's really struggling with it. Another aspect of her character that the film quickly points out. It all amounts to this cyclical nature for her, of one, having to prove she's calm in the face of danger, two, ruminating over the fact that she's not brave, in her eyes at least, and thus, three, strengthening her bond with her hat, strengthening the need to hide away her cowardice and bolster her tough gal persona, thus leading us back to square one. And in my opinion, the film does a decent job at making this all abundantly apparent. Sack off, LeBond! What? I'm trying to cheer her up. Potty training's not going well. <laughs> it's nasty. Oh, hello, Louise. Did you have a nice, nutritious meal? <laughs> It continues this perpetual cycle and displays this mental rut she's stuck in, and it does this so seamlessly that it's easy to miss. But what's even more interesting here, at least to me, is that there's an easy out for Louise from the very beginning, one that she refuses to take. She can either A, take off the hat, B, do the dead man's drop, or C, the bravest option, she can do both. And either of these will disprove Chloe's claim that she's a baby, thus negating any need to prove she's brave, and thus breaking her cycle. I mean, when you really stop to think about it, the whole film, or her half anyways, is about her trying to prove she's brave and not a baby, rather than trying to prove she doesn't need her hat. I'm gonna show them all what And while she eventually does this in the end, as we know, she has to go through her much-needed arc to get there, but I'll address that in the next part. 
For now, let's switch eyes to Bob and see what's really ticking underneath his parental hood. This is a practice burger. Why are you whispering? I don't want it to hear him feel bad. While Bob's character arc on the surface is about optimism and overcoming those dark, intrusive, pessimistic thoughts, there's really so much more going on here. For one, Linda is trying to show him, or I guess remind him in case he forgot all 12 seasons worth of challenges before this film's release, that there is always another way out of hard times in life. Life is always going to get us down, and it's always waiting in the background, lurking in the shadows, waiting for us to get back up on our feet just to throw us another curveball. But it's an endearing aspect of the show that so many of us have come to cherish because we get to witness the Belchers get knocked down week after week, but at the end of the day, they're always back up on their feet, blessed with that tiny win in life that so graciously arrives in the nick of time. I certainly think this theme is present within this film and it drives a big portion of Bob's main arc of optimism, but what we should be asking ourselves is what's actually driving the need for this arc in the first place? Remember, I said Louise's and Bob's arcs are very similar within this film, they're both driven by their deepest, darkest fears. And in my opinion, it's no secret what that is for Bob. How are you gonna scare mom and dad? Dad's scared of failure. Where do we find some of that? Let's look in the cupboards. I, I think we need to explain to them what poor means. You're putting too much pressure on yourself, on both of us. We're so poor, Lynn, and it's Christmas. Again, it keeps coming, it never stops. It's just sometimes this holiday makes me feel like I'm a Failure. One question keeps me up at night. Kids, I guess I ought to tell you. It's a restaurant, a recipe for failure. He failed. He failed at everything. He failed at marriage. He failed at family. The kids are failures. Bob's fear of failure is a theme that the show has explored time and time again. I mean, he calls himself out in the dang pilot for the show. He is a constant worry wart, plagued by anxiety and stress and the financial burdens of his restaurant and his family. Their way of life is his way of worry, and it's no wonder why he's stressing out so quickly in this film. Oh, uh, God. Oh, uh, no. Uh, is Dad okay? Boy. Bob does not want to let his family down. He cracks jokes all the time about how useless they are and complains woe is me at every chance he gets because nothing can ever just be easy for him, thus why he's always needing to find another way out of hard times. But deep down, it's a rooted issue of his inner fear that he's letting down his family, the ones he loves most. I mean, I held it together in front of the kids during dinner, but I'm really worried. Oh yeah? I couldn't tell. Look, it's scary to be optimistic, especially for someone like Bob. I mean, to let his guard down after everything he's been through? Someone who lives paycheck to paycheck where every loan payment, every rent check is an emergency down to the wire? It's no wonder why he ever questions whether he deserves to own and run a restaurant, whether he is an actual chef. No, actually, I'm a professional cook. Yeah, you and me both, right? And so, like Louise, it's no wonder why Bob's simple arc is quickly turned on its head when they both receive important pieces of information in the third act, when they both realize self-important personal truths. Bob and Louise both have a tendency to overextend themselves. Bob is always overworking himself, as well as his family when he gets the chance, to prove that he and his business is not a failure. And it's something his wife is constantly bugging him for, trying to bring him back down to earth. Meanwhile, Louise is always trying too hard to prove her bravery. I mean, in this past season alone, she almost drowned Tina and herself in a cave looking for a cannonball just to show off and show and tell. And it is a nasty character trait that her siblings are always calling her out on. In other words, it's the most toxic thing about them, and the movie embarks on showing them that they both need to cut it out. It's just our landlord's gonna go to prison, the bank's gonna call in our loan, and then they'll take our restaurant stuff, and we will live in a box down the street. This is what's gonna happen. No, oh, Bob, I need you. The kids need you. What do you mean? You and the kids need me to not go out of business. No, going out of business down there is not as bad as going out of business in there. My soft back? No, you're hard. And hey, who knows? Maybe Mr. Fischotto is innocent. He gets out, we put that wink in the bank. I don't know if he's innocent, but he's going to prison. Well, at least the other prisoners will like his eye patch. That's a good look for prison. You know, conversation start. 
This scene right here is the perfect setup for this movie. It shows us Bob's insecurities in a very raw, vulnerable moment, while also using Louise's insecurities to jumpstart her journey all in one fell swoop. These characters both suffer from an imbalance within their confidence. They're both confident in their abilities and or personalities, but they're held back by that deep fear lingering within them. And so sure enough, the third act throws them each a curveball, one that forces them to change their perspective. Luis, for one, learns the truth behind the origin of her hat, learning that it was actually a gift, a reward for being brave on her first day of school. She used to wear this brightly colored winter hat, even in warm weather. It was a little weird, but it was kind of cute, I guess. She, she always said it was because she didn't feel like doing her hair. I think she just liked it. And I had extra materials, so, uh, rabbit ears. But I made them after your first day of preschool to celebrate, because you were so brave. Really? I was? Yeah. yeah. Do you not remember it that way? No. It's not a mark of her cowardice, it's a sign of her closeness to her grandmother, a memento of her bravery. And this simple truth turns things around for Louise, breaking that cycle and that need to prove others wrong. Because, again, her self-doubt is now gone. She knows she's brave, and she doesn't give two hoots what anyone else thinks. Bob also comes around in the end and becomes more optimistic, surpassing even Linda in this regard, fighting the doubt of his own family, fighting against his worry of letting them down. That's it, then. The goddess. Wait, no, don't you give up. I'm tired, Bob. No, you never give up. I give up. And then you say, don't give up. And I say, okay. And then we do that over and over. And now that I'm saying it out loud, that can't be fun. I'm going to do for you what you do for me. I am not giving up. We are going to get out of here. I am going to lend to this. Whoa. Whoa. Dad, are you Fonzie? The new section of pipe is plastic. We, we lost a tire. Maybe metal grinding against plastic. Metal wins. Grinding like sexy dancing? What's that? Never mind, go on. So the wheel breaks the pipe and the water gets us out somehow? Or it could do the other thing water does. Hot tub time machine? No, drown us. Oh. While they're in the hole, the deepest, darkest place they've been in this film, when all hope is lost, that's when they turn around. That's when they both learn that there is always another way out of the hard times in life. And I just love how the film chooses to show us this lesson. But it doesn't stop there. It gives them both a chance to prove themselves, a chance to show us the new and improved Bob and Louise in action, saving the day, saving the fish odors, saving their restaurant. Louise is not a coward, and Bob is not a failure. Geesh, they just kind of shoved some dirt. <laughs> The film also goes one step further from here by showing Bob yet another lesson, one that digs even deeper into his psyche, that he doesn't need to do it alone. Bob is a defender, a caretaker, a provider. He is the worry wart because he wants his family to live worry free. He carries the family burdens so that his family can be happy, which makes him happy in the end. But you see, this is his toxic cycle, one that he desperately needs to break. And the film allows him that chance by showing him that his family is not giving up. They are not letting Bob carry this burden alone anymore. They charge into the big climax together, intent on saving the day as a team, as the family unit we all know and love. Hello? Is this the police? I'd like to report a, a thing. A thing happened. Do you need more than that? Hold on. And so in the film's epic final moments, Bob and Louise both have their chance to prove themselves on the molehill ride, with Louise proving she's brave and Bob letting her, allowing his own daughter to help him save the day, which I think is just beautiful. When I first saw this film back in May of 2022, I walked out happy knowing that I enjoyed the film, but I didn't really have anything to say about it at the time. Other than the fact that I loved the musical numbers and frankly wished we had gotten more, and other than the fact that I enjoyed the story overall as well as the characters and easter eggs we got to see, I didn't really have anything insightful to say about this film. But that's classic Bob's Burgers for you sometimes. They leave you happy with a seemingly simple plot and lesson. But just as I think more and more people will come to love this movie over time, I also think that this is one that will age significantly well because of how thematically rich it is underneath the surface. It's one that kids and adults can enjoy together, as a family, as intended. 
There are things here for everyone, such as how to approach self-doubt and our insecurities that hold us back. There are important lessons for kids, such as it's okay to be afraid, but we can't run from our fears forever. And then there are great takeaways for adults, especially parents, where it reminds us that yes, being optimistic is hard and even scary at times, but there is always another way out of the hard times in life. And it's easier to find when we accept that loving support around us, rather than try to prove that we can do it all on our own. In truth, we're just slowing ourselves down and hurting ourselves in every conceivable way. The Bob's Burgers movie is not perfect. There are lapses in logic with its setup and a lack of certain mystery tropes that would probably have benefited the film on rewatches, but it is true to the show, true to its characters, and it encapsulates the wonderful, charming heart that this tight-knit family is known for. Should we just not do this? No, I want to be able to say I caused a chicken nugget in my mouth more than anything. Otherwise, this has all been a waste. And similar to its best episodes, it is thematically rich while perfectly entertaining. And I just hope that it finds the people that need to hear its messages over time. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, leave a like to let me know, as well as the YouTube algorithm gods that decide my channel's fate. Feel free to share this with a fellow Bob's Burgers fan, especially someone who enjoyed the film as much as I did, and comment down below what your favorite moment from the movie was. I would love to hear it. As always, thank you so much for your support. Consider subscribing if you like wholesome deep dives like this one, and check out the many others that I've put out already. But as for now, that's enough out of me. I hope you all have a great rest of your summer, and I will see you all next time.